Well, g'day folks, I'm Keith Jobson. I'm back from a nine day ride on the 500, this year's 2024 APC Rally. Now, before I roll all of the footage from the, from the ride, the highlights, the lowlights, I just wanted to give you a little bit of context about this rally and why I've chosen to do it. So if I go back 12 years, I was a brand new adventure rider. Brand new bike, new gear, new luggage, new everything. Didn't know anything about adventure bikes, but I knew I wanted to do it. And this is the rally that I signed up for. Fast forward 12 years, and I just wanted to go back and experience that rally again, and all the things that go with it. Sit back and enjoy the ride, and I'll get on with washing this thing. The APC Rally is a nine day, 4,000 kilometer loop on the east coast of Australia. You're given the GPX file and some track notes. However, you start wherever you like on the loop and you ride at your own pace. This year's track extended from almost Melbourne to Brisbane and ran clockwise. We started near Mansfield and we took a few back roads through the Strathbergy Ranges, picked up some other riders, then rode a few irrigation channel tracks to join the APC track near Cobram. Who, who hasn't got the map? Gavin. And Fred's still learning his one. It's on there, but now we're on John's track. Yeah. <laughs> Quiet little town, probably was something back in the day and is no longer. These sort of roads are great. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see it? Yeah, he flicked over and nearly got me. <laughs> Apart from wildlife, it was an easy going first day, which worked well as people were getting their navigation sorted. Rally life, the early morning starts, the birds are cheaping, the sun is barely up. We got a big day today, 770 kilometres up to Narrabri. We'll skip breakfast in town because that'll take too long, and we'll have breakfast somewhere on the road. Keith, why is there only two wheel marks? Yeah, that's a good point. They were all ahead of us, weren't they? Yeah. Hey. I reckon someone's missed a turn. <laughs> there he is. What's love about G his GPS isn't refreshing all the time, so he has to keep scrolling through the map. Ah, right. The navigation issues continued with a few wrong turns. <laughs> And having been following pink lines for years now, it's easy to forget little things like having the zoom scaling right or the screen orientation locked. But with a few tips and tricks passed on, everyone's getting the hang of it. Alright, we've got to Trangy on a Sunday. Pubs not serving food, cafe over the road's closed. Closed. Closed, everything's closed, so we're pushing on to the next town for food, for lunch. It's going to be a bit of a later lunch. Something to be aware of, I guess. These little towns don't expect a lot on Sundays. Today was always going to be an unapologetically long transport day, designed to get us north and to the good tracks. But after lunch, we decided to dodge the last 100 kilometres of bitumen and head into the Pilliga Forest. Of course, when you venture off the pink line and do that your way. own thing, you waste time at every turn trying to figure out the best way through. I think we're going that way. And then there's things like missing bridges. These are the type of events where your mates become good mates. <laughs> A bit of work, but it was an enjoyable end to the day. Jeez, I'm glad I'm not carrying the Norden through there. <laughs> All good? Momentum, keep it going. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Oh, yeah. hey, that's the one. <laughs> Fill it in. <laughs> I believe at Marabri, we're day three today. We've got a lot less case of there. 
Five hundred. Oh, five eight. I thought it was five eighty, but anyway. Watch out for the uh, cows and the dog. The big, mean-looking dog. It's day three, and the tracks are starting to get interesting. The run across to deep water was good, and from there on to Kyogre was just great. <laughs> that, that one was racing your teeth, I could see that one. Oops, damn. Are you saying that to scare me? Once you break, you lose it. I want to control. Yeah. Now I don't trust it. No. Shouldn't. Once these big girls go, they don't come back. Yeah. As the day goes on, we're realising the tyres we started with just aren't going to make it home. That was a little slippery. Get <laughs> 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 some there. Land on the front <laughs> wheel. Luggage, luggage out the front. <laughs> Virgin track. This is fantastic. This is just beautiful up here, isn't it? We finished on a great run through the Richmond Range National Park. What is it, day four? It's, it's that point in the trip where you lose what day it is, ain't you? <laughs> That's what day it is, it's day four. <laughs> yeah. Day four at Kyogle. That's it, with no ties. One of the great parts about this, following someone else's pink line, is that you, you get to see places that you just don't see. Like, you would never come here. <laughs> I took the photo five seconds too early. At a lost phone. Looks like through technology we've worked out it's about five k's back. So we're going back to have a look for it. The old uh, unzipped tank bag trick. Found it, eh? Yeah, I know, it was just, you see, it was right where the pin drop was. Right at the pin drop? Yeah. Thank you. No worries. It's a good track. Yeah, um, don't be that red stuff. No, it's all pretty grippy. So far, it's been good. Five minutes later. I knew I saved it. <laughs> I didn't really save it. <laughs> Bit of a sideways moment, but she's all good. But it's a pretty flat bottom. There's none of that big shit in it. Yeah, right. Do I take a video or not? Ah, okay, just just go. <laughs> you feel down there, Keith? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Stuff. I think lined you up there, Keith. Think? No, I didn't say it was really shallow. This is what the rally's all about, right? This camaraderie. <laughs> Lost my little, my little, uh, what's it called? Insta 360. Go to, lost it. 
Dang it. Oh well, I've downloaded the footage from the last couple of days already, but yeah, missing the race. Don't go my way, mate. <laughs> I wish I had a tyre. <laughs> <laughs> that paddle I was talking about would have come in handy. <laughs> Let's do everything today. Great scenery, river crossings, some fun yeah, tracks, a few so mini dramas that. thrown in. Trophy. The tyres are just about Excellent. done, but we've organised replacements at Kempsey tomorrow. This is beautiful country, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Magic. Next section is supposedly two hours to do 80k, so that should be some pretty good stuff in here, I reckon. A shorter day today, kilometre wise, which worked out perfectly for a tyre change at Kempsey. How yeah, good is it? I'm on a tyre that <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> breaks. It's fantastic. I keep waiting for it to step out. Some very scenic countryside around Ellenborough Falls, which themselves are worth a look. The only rain on our entire trip was five minutes out of Gloucester, which was so heavy we were soaked within a minute. But this was kind of an enforced washing of some pretty ordinary riding gear by this stage, and that had our hotel rooms looking like a laundry. I'm leaving Gloucester, it's day six now. Uh, another fairly big day today, we're headed to Lithgow, it's about 400 k's of the day. Probably a good nine hours of riding in there. This first loop out of Gloucester was one of the best parts of this whole ride. There was some rain overnight, so that meant a bit of a wet track in places. And there was also lots of gates that are best dealt with in pairs of riders rather than solo. He's a nice bloke. He's a nice bloke, there. Yeah, thanks, kid. No worries. No. I don't know where the track is. It's not here. Oh. Is there something? That, no, it's the other way. Up it's that way? Behind you. Over here? Yeah, have a look at that you one. You go there. left. Oh, you guys are good at the gate thing, aren't you? <laughs> I've got one here. It makes you feel any better. Help! After one flat tyre and morning tea at Dungog, a bit of a scary moment for one of our group. I knew that was coming. I just knew that was coming. Just let me sit here, mate. Yeah, I'm just looking. I'm just looking. Uh, no, that's moving. This is moving. No, no, you're all torn up, but it, it looks yeah. good. Right. Thanks. You had all that shit on. I knew that was coming. It was a slightly more sedate run after that one. The rider was a little bit beat up, he lost a bit of skin on his knuckles, but the body armour saved his shoulder and elbow. Next, after what seemed like an eternity of bitumen roads getting through Maitland, a sneaky back road out of Curry Curry took us into the Wadigans for a fast blast through that forest. Wadigans National Park. It looks like loads of tracks are here, but you'd need a whole day to explore it properly. A quick
quick lunch at St Albans pub, and on to the ferry at Wiseman's, then off to Lithgow via a whole bunch of tracks that I hadn't ridden before. Barrow Ridge track. Amazing rocks, aren't they? Yeah, they seem like a bit of good footage coming through here. Wow. It was a foggy start to the day as the track took us through the simply stunning Gardens of Stone National Park. These are some seriously impressive rock formations. Sometimes you do have to slide in and have a look, don't you? Next it was into the pine forests around the timber town of Oberon, then some great riding through the Abercrombie River National Park, where we had a good old chat to a lady who lives in the middle of this park. This is a little house. A motorcyclist herself, she told us various stories from years living there, including having to rescue multiple Go riders on. from this river. No assistance required today though. Little oinkers. <laughs> Lucky. Fred, that's yours, mate. <laughs> we rolled into Murrumbakeland that afternoon for a bit of bike maintenance before heading into the Australian Alps the next day. This is day eight for us. Um, the stop back there, I was informed my microphone cable was not connected to my camera. So whatever I said this morning is gone. Play you a little montage of what we did see this morning. See if I can remember what we said. Yeah, out the back of Marin Bateman, just beautiful rolling hills. Such a nice country, like a golden colour. Now we've left the green behind of northern New South Wales into the more drier country, sheep country. Just beautiful. Then into into the Brinda Bello National Park. It's a track called Two Sticks Track. It was that was great. A really nice riding up through there. Down past Brinda Bello, I think it's a township or something. Past there, and then up the other side, we're into the uh, I think it's like the Long Plain area. We're heading into that area. So it's uh, Brumby Country up here. So we're starting to see now. Piles of Brumby food. Brumby manure. There's one right there. The Brumbies. Yeah, good looking Brumbies. Kosciuszko National Park. Disaster weather. Such a good riding. Murrumbidgee River. From Murrumbateman to Talbingo is classic alpine country. From there, instead of heading deep into the Victorian high country like previous years, this year's tracks stick to the northern edges down through Tumbarumba, Gingelic and onto Yakandanda. 
with some decent uphills, downhills and log challenges, things were kept interesting throughout the day. Lay down you big girl. You know the hand? Oh, I, can't, I can't see what I'm doing. I'm in shape. Right here. Yeah, you're good. You've got no windscreen, you should be able to ride straight under it. <laughs> That's how you do it. There's the pub. Yep. You gonna have a, a lemon squash? Come on, little fella. One more. Our last day today, day nine. We've uh, got seven hill coast to get back to where we started. Surrounding Myrtleford are pine forests, ridge tracks, and generally a lot of very good flowing adventure bike tracks. This is fabulous riding. This track is really good. This is um, out the back of after Myrtleford. And Myrtleford and Whitfield. I should mention McDonald Spur Track, however. This is a pretty difficult climb, and I was glad to be on a small bike. The rally notes do offer diversions around some of these tougher sections. Alright, this is a McDonald Spur Track. This could be a bit challenging, according to one of the guys. It's certainly challenging. It's wet. Oh, that's a big hill. Oh, that's I'm going to have fun up this one. It's okay if it's dry. Yep. Wow. How'd you go? Yeah, that was alright. I wouldn't want to be on a big bike though. Or oh, oh, what day with these size? Oh man, that'd be a nightmare. And it's rough, it's rough at the moment. I've been along there when it's smooth as, but that's rough. That big mountain over there, and you can see way off in the distance. That's about where we started. Nearly there, only back. So that's about it for the bike part of this trip. I'll probably throw a few thoughts in, some closing thoughts on, on the rally as a whole. Do that in the car on the way home. So just some final thoughts on this rally this year. I get asked two things quite a bit in the comments on all the videos that I do. One is, can I come riding with you? And the second one is, how do you find all these tracks that you do? And I've got to say that it's rallies like this one, the APC rally, probably for that matter, the KTM rally, the Husky rally, BMW rally, or any of those organized events, We'll answer both of those questions for you. How do you find people to ride with? Do a rally. You'll find people that, you know, suit your style, that, you know, ride at the same speed, and then you get on with. Second thing is you know, finding the tracks to do. And that is, again, where these rallies are brilliant for that. Someone's done all the hard work for you. You are following a pink line. You know, it's basically to a formula to get the average rider home in eight or nine days. That's the formula. And so there's going to be some transport sections. And there was a couple of days on this rally at the start for us in Victoria. 
uh, that were just big, long days, just transport days really, to get to the good bit on the coast. But the last five or six days have been sensational tracks. Yes, you could put together a ride that did more dirt and more technical stuff, but you won't be doing it in eight or nine days. You'll be taking two or three weeks to do it. So it's, it's a bit of a balance. But look, basically I found this year's rally was uh, exceptionally well organized in terms of the tracks. The timings were spot on. A lot of the tracks were new, stuff that I have not done before. And I've done a few of these rallies. So that's, that's all really good stuff for a rider to do new things uh, and know, you know roughly what's coming up with the track notes and how long it's gonna take you. But as for the bike for this trip, I would say the best one is probably the 690. That would be about the right size bike for the, the mix of terrain that's on this rally. And obviously the 500 handled everything really well. Um, and obviously the guys on the bigger bikes would have had a much and much more enjoyable time on the big open sections in the transport sections but overall you know, every bike will make it there'll be challenges for sure depending on what bike you, that you have anyway i've had a great week i hope you've got something out of this i hope it's given you something to think about maybe you know do one of these rides and uh meet some new riding buddies see some amazing parts of australia thanks for watching i will catch you in the next one Bye for now.